Welcome back. <clears throat> as soon as I start recording, I always cough. No idea why. Could be because I haven't used my voice much this morning anyway. So, today I'm going to start off what I'm hoping is going to be a 12 days of building every single day. Um, but the first one um, is the Hogwarts Wizard's Chess, set number 76392. Retrieved my little crib sheet. Um, retails in the UK for sixty four ninety nine and has eight hundred and seventy six pieces. That's about seven pence a piece. And um, what I would say, my initial impressions from looking at the front of the box, a lot of repetitive building here, because of course the pieces are the same, both black and white. So that's sixteen pawns, four rooks, four bishops, four knights, two queens, two kings. What I don't get with it is why well, we've got the minifigures. I understand the Chamber of Secrets reference before anybody pulls me up on that. I do like the look of the minifigures um, with the civilian outfits on. Um, and of course we get a gold figure because it's the 20th anniversary of Lego Harry Potter. So top of the box gives us the one by one of Harry. What I do like is it gives us here the scale of the actual wizard's chest pieces against the minifigures that are included, which are Harry, Ron and Hermione. Um, of course, they've got the little legs because it's the very junior ones. So that gives you an idea what sort of size they're going to come out at. Not much on that side of the box. Usual stuff on the bottom. Usual stuff on the side. The back of the box is quite a good shot of the chessboard. And it shows you here exactly how many of each piece you need, which is basically what I've just said. Um, I'm not sure on my thoughts on these till I actually get around to building them. Because it's multiples of everything, I may well do a little live build of each individual piece. Probably the whites, because they'll put, show up better on the camera than the black ones will, as we've already seen. My black pieces don't show up very well. And you get three of the chocolate frog cards. Yes, I am persisting in calling them chocolate frog cards. You can shove the wizard cards where the sun does not shine. So, get in. Again, I'm surprised actually that it's a push tab box. I thought this one might have been glued. So, an awful lot of black and white bits. I'm not sure I've got everything out of there. Let's just do the uh, good old rustle and get all the bits together. That's actually quite interesting. Only got five bags. Thought it would have been more. Thought they might have brought that up more. Do have a lot of little grey flakes. They look like possibly a 2 by 6 thing. And then some black and white there as well. Obviously they're for constructing the chessboard. Honesty on this one. Not my thing. I only got it because it's the Harry Potter stuff. So this is the booklet. I'm surprised it's not at the A4 bound one. It's just the... It's for someone between A4 and A5 size wise these, they're a weird size, um, but it's the stapled together version. So we go, yep, confirms that five bags is correct. For some reason the golden figure is in bag one, and it steps you all through. Now, what I wanted to look at is when we get to making the pieces themselves. Oh, I quite like the way the construction underneath chessboard looks you create these and slot them underneath that's an interesting idea hmm actually I'm quite looking forward to the build now I've got to I know I'll enjoy this bit I always enjoy tiling but does it say at the beginning so yeah obviously there is only one of that piece so that one doesn't count one of that one. 
Yes, it does. It says two times. So I'm assuming when we get to the pawn. Yeah, eight times. Youch. And then when we get to the end of the book, the artist representation, the advert for the Chamber of Secrets, etc. The information on the wizard cards and your part list. Apparently it's an orange brick separator with this one. Yep, I can confirm. I can't remember digging the bag out to show you. So <laughs> there we go. That's everything that you get in the wizard's chest, set 76392. So I'm going to go away, chuck something very boring on YouTube. Not really. I don't watch boring things. Um, and get on with building this and I will be back in a little while. Just thought I'd give you a quick look at the inside of the actual chessboard. That's what you start with. You build the strut across and then you have these long <coughs> grey bits that you then stretch across. And I've done this side so you can see literally it's just strut across one by two tile and it just finishes it off so from the underside got that bit which is braced to the top and then these across so quite a simple but very effective construction for the board itself quite pleased with that both there with the board now put half of the tiling on as you can see from the top we have put some more bracing structures in so when you look at it underneath you have these I'll just pop that one out. Is shaped pieces here. And just clip onto the underside of the grey struts. Six on each side, and then you have these shaped pieces just with a one by one stud on these on the base of it to level it all off. Don't know what these bits are, but I presume they're just there to help brace it and it does actually feel quite sturdy even though I haven't finished putting the actual tiling on on this side it doesn't feel like it's going to break apart and certainly the tiled side feels good and rigid so it is a really interesting and intriguing build for the board it's the first time I've done a Lego chess board and I'm amazed at how simple yet elegant it is so you start off building the pawns first, which is a, quite a simple but effective little build. And they do turn out strikingly similar to the version that's shown in the films. I was quite surprised at how close to that figure they are. Unfortunately, they are a fixed bayonet style, so you can't actually cross the swords like they do in the film. But it's a really, really good approximation of how they look. And it's a good job it's a simple and fun build because you've got to make eight of them. And that is what the finished form looks like. Just with that little handful of pieces, you get this guy. I do love the adapted fireman's helmet. The little piece on the back. Looks really good. The black ones absolutely identical but I knew they wouldn't show up as well so I'll come with the white to show you so yeah that is the pawn the next figure you build is actually the king piece and again you want to need one of these but the white and the black are absolutely identical not particularly difficult build. Again, it looks strangely effective when completed. You can't see these little grey bits once it's done. I wouldn't normally build on a turntable. It just gives a better contrast. So you can see the figure better. I don't think I'd already made one of these, which I'm having to refer to the uh, 
build diagram all the time. Now, what I would say is the helmet is really easy to distinguish. So that's the king's helmet, and that's the helmet that it uses for the other figures. So it's really easy to tell it apart. However, the sword is very, very similar. Apart from that cross piece, only the height that's different. And I did mess it up a couple of times on the first one. But got it sorted. Just push that into the hook at the front. And that is the king piece. Again, the black is identical, and that's how he looks in the black. Next up is the queen. As you can already see, the build techniques for all of them are very, very similar, even though they do end up looking quite different. We enter the build. They start off all in the same way. Fortunately, they've managed to get the build squished onto one page, so you don't need to. Uh, well, when I say onto one page, that's what I mean. Across one open page, so it makes it a lot easier, especially when you're doing the pawns, all the multiple steps. So the crown is a bit of a letdown on this one. And that's what the coin looks like, although she's supposed to have a robe of some description on, hence the shape. But yeah, the head with just a little single round tile. Not a great representation of the crown. Does look a lot better. In the black again the figure is identical but somehow it works better in the black i don't i really don't know why so next up is the bishop and again they start exactly the same way it's just a much lower plane i do like the way they've built them radiating out so that the order they need to be on the board roughly because very, very long time since I have been anywhere near chess because I am hopeless at it and I would have had to ask the other half to set me straight as to how the uh, layout. But because of the way the instructions are, I don't need to as it tells me. It's not one. This is actually one of the fiddlier ones. Surprise, surprise. You'd think as you got further out from the king and the queen, they'd become a lot simpler. So that's what the bishop looks like done. That is a bit of a bugbear, that grey piece there on his crozier. It doesn't look too bad on the white. It could pass as silver, so it could uh, pass as being a me metallic mount. But on the black one, let's see here, it looks horrible. I think I might go and uh, raid my stash when I take this upstairs for it to go in its final spot. I think I'll raid my stash of these roundel pieces because I certainly have quite a few gold coloured ones left and I think that might look better on the black than the silvery colour does. It doesn't look too bad on the white. It does pass for silver but on the black it doesn't work. So the next one up is the knight and this is quite a strange little build. It's certainly my favourite 
of them all and you do wonder initially what on earth is going on as you can see you've got like this whoops weird camera shaped piece that you just start throwing things on randomly and it is very much a case of yeah and what exactly am I doing I mean I figured out which piece it was supposed to be just because of where in the build I was but it still didn't make a great deal of sense to be perfectly honest That's when it started to come together for me when I realised exactly how they were approaching this one. And then you go back to the way you start all the other builds and you make this little plate. I have to admit in white it gives me flashbacks to the roller coaster build, but never mind. So that's the finished night piece. And of course you can pull him off there and put the Ron minifig on. So that you can reenact the scene from the Chamber of Secrets. That's how it looks completed piece the gray isn't as obtrusive on this one still not a fan of it i think that should have been replaced with a self-colored one doesn't look as bad on the black you can get away with it because there's a little bit of shadow it blends in better in fact the figure looks generally better in the black apart from all my mucky paw prints on it the final build, as you would expect, is going to be the rook or the castle, depending on your preference for terminology. Just quickly clip this in. As you can see, they all use very similar techniques. I'll actually do this one the way it shows in the book and do them one at once, not how I normally put them on. That confused me the first time putting that bit on. I was like, what? I don't get it. I get it now. I do, I promise. Maybe I sat there going, eh, what? You'll soon see. Now, does it make sense? Hopefully it will. We get the same helmet throughout all of them. And that's the final figure, which is the Rook or Castle. It looks more like he's coming out of an egg, doesn't he? Especially on the white one. And that is what the black version of it looks like again the black version is way way cooler this is what the uh, chest set looks like fully assembled actually this could be a new thing on that lazy susan chess yeah not ideal i like the little detail on the board of the little uh, flames around it as a reference to the film just a nice little touch it does look quite nice all set out and the builds for all the pieces are so sturdy you could genuinely use this as a chest set i think it might may have been slightly better certainly from a display point of view because every time you move it this slippy slide on the tiles it might have been nice if we could have got a way of doing um a jumper tile in the middle so that your figure would actually slot on, especially on the home spaces, 
for when you're using it for display, but that's a minor little niggle. It's taken me just over two hours, but that does include filming the creation of each of the little figures. Um, my favourite pieces are going to be that one. And strangely, the pawns. So the knight and the pawns, I think, are the best designed pieces of the bunch. They really work exceptionally well. Of course, as a little add-on to it, because basically this is what people are buying it for, ideally, is the actual chessboard. But you do also get the minifigs. So you get the Ron minifigure there, obviously with the little legs. And he's got a t-shirt and a shirt on, so very much out of school attire. So it must be the weekend. And he's got the scared face. And if we turn him round to show the back print, which is just the tartan shirt, he's got just the normal, quite happy little face on. So that's the wrong figure. Then we have the Hermione figure with a very Christmassy cardigan stroke jumper. Just take your hair off. You can see you've got the angry stroke scared face. I can't quite figure it out. And on the back, you've got the jumper print and just a fairly generic expressionless face. But obviously it's the long hair for Hermione, so it covers up a little bit of the print. But it's quite a nice hair mould, that one. And finally, there's Harry in a jumper, which he's managed to rip. I presume the uh, devil snare did that, or maybe one of the keys. And he's got just a standard generic expression. And if we turn him around, you can see the back of the jumper and his scared expression. As I've done everybody else scared, let's just twaz his head around. There we go. Yep, and now we've got a scared Harry to go with the scared Ron and Hermione. And I'll be honest, I think the only reason they've included those is because they wanted to do one of the gold minifigures for this set. In this case, it's Professor Severus Snape. He's got the 20 year print on the back. And I think that is the only reason we've got minifigures. Comes with the three my, uh, chocolate frog cards as well. I'm not going to call them wizard cards. I'm sorry, I'm just not. But it does come with three of those. And we'll take a look at those at a later date. I'm going to look at all the cards and these gold figures in more detail afterwards. So I hope you enjoyed that. And um, this, of course, is the Lego Wizard Chess. Set number is 76392, 876 pieces and retails for 64.99 in the UK. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.